I already know what I have to do. I'm really clear on that shit. I'm really clear on what I have to do. Um, and all the extra steps and stuff that go on. Where I lose steam at is taking this whole list of brain dumpings and moving into consistent action. Once the dopamine rush of writing down all this stuff on this list is gone, I'm normally tapped out. Are you looking to shut down some of the open tabs in your head? If you're a professional mom with ADHD like me, girl, I feel you. And this is why I created the Simplify My Life newsletter. The Simplify My Life newsletter shares real life tips, resources, and support to help you shut down the noise and navigate your ADHD life. Trust me, this is the one email you'll be looking forward to opening in your inbox. Join today at the link in the show notes below and I'll see you there. Welcome to We Ain't Normal. My name is Charmaine Fuller and I'm an everyday mom sharing how I navigate my ADHD brain. Each week we share tools, inspiration, and resources to help you uncover how to reclaim your time, energy, and focus. So thanks for hanging out with me today. Now on to our show. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the We Ain't Normal show. I am your host, Charmaine Fuller, and today I'm going to dig into life area dumping. Now, you might go, what is that? I did a really quick video on Facebook on my um, page a couple of days ago about life area dumping, and I wanted to go a little bit deeper into it because that gave just like a little snippet of what life area dumping is or just life dumping, what that is, um, how it's different than brainstorming. And how you can use it to begin to look at what's going on and be really honest about what's going on in your life now so you can set some realistic goals that fit your full, beautiful life. So welcome. Today, I'm going to dig in. I'm going to get in and we're going to get started. So I'm going to share a little story. You know, I always share a story. My neurodiverse brain does not love brainstorming. I mean, it loves it because it gives me this opportunity to write down this list of things that I have to do. You know, you come up with this goal that you want to create for a life area. And then you start to basically just word vomit all of the different actions you could take or all of the actions that you feel like you could take to get you closer to this goal. So it's supposed to be all these things. And then you're supposed to take all of these things from this brain dump, this brainstorm or whatever. And then you're supposed to create action items based off of that piece there. For me, what would happen is that I would say, yes, this is what I know I want to do. This is how I know I want this life area to look. But where I fell off at was after I did the brain dump. I often just kind of looked at the page like, uh, how am I going to get all this accomplished? And it would feel, it would fuel that dopamine rush of, yay, I have this list now. Now I know what to do because technically a brainstorm or a brain dump is supposed to set you up for more clarity. Um, It's often used in the space of people that might have analysis paralysis. They're not clear on what their next steps are. They know what they need to do, but they're not clear on the next steps. Here's the problem that I had. I had with that. And I, I feel like you probably experienced this too, where I already know what I have to do. I'm really clear on that shit. I'm really clear on what I have to do. Um, and all the extra steps and stuff that go on. Where I lose steam at is taking this whole list of brain dumpings and moving into consistent action. Once the dopamine rush of writing down all this stuff on this list is gone, I'm normally tapped out by that point. By that point, I've already tried to do, if I I dump down a list of like 20 things, I've already tried to smash like 10 of those in one day. Um... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so by the time the next day or week comes, I've totally disconnected from this brain dump. Um, I've totally was like, you know what? This is way too much work because I go in and I go hard, right? Totally too much work, not into it. Um, I go back to the way things were. 
So that's how brain dumping worked for me. It it fueled the dopamine fix that I needed to like take all the stuff out of my head and see it on paper and start to take some action. But where it lost me at was the sustained action and activity that I needed to be successful in any area of my life. And so what I came up with was looking at my life and getting really clear about what was going on right now. I chose the areas that were on the biggest, that were on fire, like burning, flaming, Rome, going down. I chose those four areas and I looked at, okay, what would be needed for this to pick itself up? And I really laser focused and I thought about the next 30 days. Um, I didn't focus on getting rid of all of the actions I could think of in my head, out of my head and on the paper. That that was never my goal with life dumping. It was never my goal to say, let's take all of the steps that you think that you can think of doing and put it on paper and then taking action. Because here's another thing I discovered. Sometimes when we are creating these plans, and I don't know about your neurodiverse brain, but if I create a plan and I create a brain dump or a brainstorm based on this goal I have, and damn it, I can't do all the actions that I've put on that flipping brain dump, I'm going to get stuck. I'm honest to goodness going to get stuck and it's going to feel, um, I'm going to get stuck back into analysis paralysis because like, oh, it's not going, it's not working out how I wrote it down to work out. So I found for me that only a few pieces at a time kept me engaged. It kept me from swimming into overwhelm or analysis paralysis. It kept me engaged with what I was moving toward. And it kept me engaged in a way that wasn't overwhelming. It wasn't too many steps. It wasn't too crazy, but it definitely kept me engaged in that space. And so that's what life dumping is to me, is taking the life areas that really need my love right now and even some of the ones that may not need my love, but if those areas are sustaining me so that I can work on those other areas, what do I need to do to either sustain this particular life area or maybe bump it up a little bit so it could be stronger so that it can help support me while I'm working on some of these more challenging life areas. And to be quite honest, I work on one challenging life area at a time. And this is what I mean that although I'm working on multiple life areas at any given time because of the nature of my life as a mom, because of the nature of my life as an employee, because of the nature of my life as a business owner, because of the nature of my life as a wife, I am working on multiple life areas on any given day. But I have the few and the mighty that are the ones that are really going to push. Shalene Johnson used to call it a push goal. What is the one life area that once I get it together, it's going to domino effect and push over the other life areas to either strengthen or help them out in a way that you wouldn't have even expected, but um, it does, okay? So I began to do that life dumping piece and I began to look at the life areas, look at where they were and get really honest about that, look at where I wanted them to be. And then I thought about, you know, creating actions that didn't leave me feeling like I had more ish to do. And it would be like three to five actions. And then you reevaluate, come back, add another three to five, come back, reevaluate, do another three to five. This method is not about finding the actions, writing them down. And then this is all you stick with because I know that's not how my brain works. And, you know, for most, for many neurodiverse people, I won't say most, for many of the neurodiverse people that I've met and even, even with my own kids, having this long list actually makes you feel more like shit because you're not going to get to the whole list. You're going to get distracted along the way. And then when you realize you have this full list of stuff that you still haven't done, you feel like you have failed in some way, shape or form. And you haven't. It just feels like that because there's all this stuff on this list that feels overwhelming. It was exciting at first. It was exciting because now you got all this stuff out your head and it's on paper. But after a bit, it begins to feel overwhelming and unattainable. And so I really wanted to share what I was doing, what I do with clients, what I do in my workshops, 
with you all here on the podcast um, because I just shared that little that little snippet piece. This isn't blood, by the way. This is a marker <laughs> for that. Um, share that little piece, you know, to give bite size on the Internet. And if you really want to get into the methodology of it all, you know, that's why you're here on the podcast. So let's get it popping. What is the difference between life dumping and brainstorming? How is it different? Why does it matter? Why do you even want to engage yourself in the practice of life dumping? First of all, like I said, brainstorming often starts at what do you want? What do you want to do? What do you want to be? What do you want to have? What what do you want? And that's fine and dandy. The problem with that is the problem with starting with what you want and not where you are is that you don't take into account what is going on in your life right now. You're just dreaming of future casting, baby. And you are creating these dreams that may not even be in alignment with where you are right now in your life. And so then you get into this, like I said, you get into all this stuff that you've brainstormed or brain dumped and you're really excited in the beginning, but because it's not in alignment with where you are right now, you lose that dopamine rush and you give up until you realize you have this, this is, this is, <laughs> this is New Year's resolutions, ladies. This is that, what do you want? Everybody wants to start off with, what do you want? What do you want? Want whatever you want. And that's great. Always know what you want. But the, the issue with brainstorming is that it starts off at, what do you want? What do you want to do, be or have? Life dumping starts with what's going on now. You say you want to make your finances better. Where are they at right now? Not where do you want to be? Not that you want to be making a million dollars a year. That's fabulous, darling. But where are they right now? Is your checkbook balanced? Do you know how much money that comes in every month? Um, when is the last time you ran a report of your family's finances? You know, those don't have to necessarily be your questions. You would have your own questions, but as you look at where your life, where that area of your life is right now, and there are eight, nine life areas that I mainly work with. We're not going to talk about all of them because I don't need you to have deer and hair headlight syndrome. Excuse me, but we have family, friends, love relationships with yourself or with somebody else, your finances. I separate career and business because if you're like me, I have a job. So that's kind of like, to me, you know, my job, career. And then I have my business that I run. So those two are separate for me because how I feel about my job is not how I feel about my business. <laughs> but even though I don't love it, there is there ways that I can make it better while I'm there and make it more productive. Anywho, so career, business, health and wellness. I often split that into spiritual, mental, physical health. Learning and growth, because that is so important your physical environment, and that includes your car, your house, your yard, like that piece there. Um, and I often break out family and friends. Like that one is two different things, how I am with my kids. And when I say family, I mean like my kids, my husband, mom, dad, et cetera, friends, my friendships, um, any things that I might be nurturing. So about nine life areas. And you pick one. Where do you feel that you have the most pull at? Where do you feel is the biggest challenge for you? And so life dumping has you picking one. So we're going to stick with finances. I love sticking with finances. So if you're looking at your finances, life dumping forces you to get really honest about what's going on right now, right? Your finances. I'm not keeping track of my checkbook. I'm not earning enough money in order to meet my needs, you know, bump my wants. I'm not making enough money to meet my needs. Um, I don't feel like I can pay my bills every month or yeah, I pay my bills every month with ease. What does that look like now? Now that you have that baseline, you go, okay, what in the next 30 days? Let me, let me come closer, come, come closer. 30 days, sis, 30 fucking days. I 30 days. 30 days. Like I don't want you and when you create what you wanted in 30 days, boo, be realistic. 
be realistic, be for real, for real about what's going on. Um, I know my brain likes to look at something and go in 30 days, I can go from never looking at my bank account to now I'm looking at it every day. Lies, alibis, mistruths, fables, and fairy tales. It takes a while to create that habit. It takes a while for things to get into motion. It takes it takes time. And if your life is super busy, I want you to be really clear with yourself. If you're saying you want to go from not engaging with money, not thinking about earning extra income, if you 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 go on from there to you're like, okay, in 30 days, and this saying is not impossible, but when I say realistic goals, think about the goals that you're setting in relation to where your family life is now. How old are your kids? Do they take naps? Are they still taking naps? Are they up? Do you have to schlep people back and forth to uh, games and practices and, you know, who's doing all the meals? Like you have to think about the full picture, even though you're thinking about one life area. When you think about making movement in that life area, I want you, you must, you must, you must think about the full picture of your life right now. Not what it was when you were in your 20s and you had no children. No, 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 no. And you didn't have a husband or a mate. Like don't, not from that space. I want, this is why we look at now. Looking at where it is now. Where do you want it to go? Okay, now how can you get there in the most expansive way possible? The one word that I uh, I wish we could take it back is the word acceleration because everybody wants to go fast. I'm gonna give you another quick story. So I was in a space, like a mindset growth space that was about the long game. Great space, about the long game, taking your time, building everything, making it pop. In comes another marketer saying, I can help you accelerate. Let's get there faster. Let's get there smarter. Let's go, go, go. Let's clear it and get there faster. Let's get to this 10K number faster. I got there faster. I was exhausted as fuck. I mean, I have two kids. I was working a um, full-time job. I have a household I'm running. Although my husband is super duper hella helpful because I was stay-at-home mom for so long at the time he didn't understand the system. So I'm teaching him systems. I'm teaching the kids systems. I'm launching, I'm coaching people. I'm doing all these things. I was burned out. I was, I don't even think burned out was the word. <laughs> I think depleted was more the word. And so I got there fast. I mean, the program did what it promised, but I was exhausted as fuck. I didn't like my business anymore. Um, I really questioned if I even wanted to serve anymore. So that's what I mean by setting, how can you get there in a way that is the most, in the most expansive way possible? That is the most expansive way for you. How do you get there in that way? And as you think about your finances, sure, you would love to cut off Netflix, Hulu, um, stop going to Starbucks. You would like to do all of these extreme things. That's, that's, that's the ADA brain. Like we, you know, we're going to go for the extreme. If I'm going to go in, I'm going to go all the way in. I'm going to go hard. I'm going to forsake everything else. I'm going to put blinders on. It's just going to be me and that thing, 10 toes down and everything else. But that is a short term strategy. And if you have kids, if you have other responsibilities other than yourself, Doing that may not be the most expansive and realistic way for you at this time. And so I want you to give yourself the space to take longer than your ego would like for you to take. Take those first 30 days to set up a framework. See how a framework works before you just start taking shit off. Um, and again, I am not giving financial advice. I am just giving examples. <laughs> but making it in a way to where you are still taking movement but it's in a way that feels expansive to you. And even though some of the things may be hard, this is not saying that you're going to get to do all of the easy things to get to where it is you want to go within those next 30 days. It's just saying that you are going to be super intentional and aware 
about what's going on in your life now. How does this play in with other areas? If I cut this, what does that look like? Like if I say I'm going to take all the kids out of their activities, what else do I have for them to do? I don't know about you. I love my kids, but I will pay for me some after school activities. I know I have to drive some places. I have to do some extra things, but the <laughs> it's it's like worth it. It's worth it for them to have something else to do besides talk to me all the time. I love my kids talking to me, but sometimes, you know, I can sit in a car at a practice and work on some stuff or read a book or have some me time. Whereas if we're here all the time together, my sensory system cannot take that. Um, realizing what your sensory system can take. What are your sensory hangups? If you're perimenopausal, what are the times of the month where you have the least amount of patience, where not popping off on people is real work and it's, you know, that's a total victory for you. Thinking about those things as you begin to create those goals. A lot of, I know I didn't. When I first started creating goals, because you listen to these coaches that are like, put blinders on, like they feed to that dopamine rush, put blinders on, get in. Yeah, I'm going to help you accelerate. Yeah, we're going to get it, get it, get it. But you know, you're like, go in, go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get it, get it, get it. And you end up depleted at the end. You end up not liking how you showed up in this whole shebang bang. So I want you to think about that as you create that goal. And you're only creating one to three goals for the next 30 days, preferably one. Um, I know slow and steady is not, I know slow and steady is not the, um, <laughs> is not what's promoted most of the time because again, they're feeding into our need to want to do everything fast. But I really want you in, to invite you, brain dump, life dumping, excuse me, forces you to slow the fuck down. Life dumping forces you to really look deeply and start from a more baseline level of creating a goal to up-level a life area more so to me than brain dumping. To me, brain dumping is great for New Year's resolutions or for things that you're looking at. Like it has its, it has its place. Um, but for those of us who are a bit neural spicy, I think looking at the full picture in a way that's not overwhelming. Again, let's say your top four areas of interest are your finances, your kids, um, your business and your marriage. Let's say those are the four areas that you're going to work on. What's going on with your finances right now? On a scale of one to five, one being the crappiest, five being the most awesome. Where is that at? What is that? What does a five look like for you? What does a one look like for you? Getting clear on that. Then once you're clear on it, what are some of the action steps that you can begin to take to get there? in a way that feels expansive and realistic. Realistic. Realistic, I know. They out here in these streets telling you to set big, bold, unrealistic goals. This is what they mean when they say that. Setting a big, bold, unrealistic goal does not mean that if you are making no money in your business that your goal over the next year should be a million dollars. Not saying that that's not possible because anything is possible. When I tell you the amount of mindset work and family setup that goes into doing that, if you're starting from scratch, ooh, child, that that's a ooh, ooh, it it's more than a notion. It is not like, yay, I went from zero to a million and like my family's intact and everything is going great. So when you're thinking about like your finances, what goal do you want to set and how what are the actions? that you need to take over the next 30 days. I want you to think of it in these little bitty sprints. Sure, your goal might be a million, but in the next 30 days, how can you set yourself up for that, right? And that could be, I'm gonna start looking at my checkbook. I'm gonna start categorizing my transactions. I am going to start, um, I'm gonna find a money coach. I'm gonna either look for a different position in my company or see what training I need to have to get the money if I plan on doing it the employer employee route. Or if I am operating a business, what are some beginning steps? Like how does my content land with my people? Like, you know, starting to look at those pieces there versus going, 
I'm going to go in, I'm going to go hard, and I'm going to go from zero to a thousand. I'm not going to take no breaks. I'm not going to get no sleep. It's just going to be all in. So thinking about simplifying that down, thinking of it in a way that is expansive and gives life and not drains it. The other piece is now, once you have all those pieces together, you're going to organize it in a way that works for your life. Again, in the next 30 days, maybe because yes, you want to improve your finances, but your kids have like three different, you got more than one kid and each of them has different activities and each of them activities is in different damn places. And sometimes in the activities on the same night, um, you work a nine to five, meaning that you, you know, if you leave your house, you're leaving probably at seven thirty, eight o'clock to get to where you got to be to. And then you have to drive traffic back home. I want you to think about your energetic load as you begin to organize how this particular goal fits into your grand plan. How does this fit into your grand plan? Because you have other shit to do. This is not the only thing you're working on, pumpkin. Like I said, you got children to feed. You know, if you have a husband, that's a whole nother thing because that's a relationship you have to fall. You have to foster your marriage. You have to take that space in your marriage. Um, and not begrudgingly, but you want to be able to enjoy that and not feel like, huh, do I have whoopee time with my husband or do I work on a landing page? Uh, duh, whoopee time. Um, <laughs> but you want to make sure that you are maintaining and being intentional about maintaining and nurturing the relationships you have as well. So you have to think about this thing in the whole scope of where you are. So that's it. That is life dumping in a nutshell. I hope this added life to you today. So remember what's going on. Get clear about it. Where do you want it to be? And how can you get there in the most expansive way? Simplify that mug and then organizing it to adding it into your life. Organize it and add it into your life. Add it into your systems. Create a system for it. Make it happy and um, make it happy. <laughs> make it happy. So thanks so much for joining me today on this solo episode. I want to invite you to my Simplify My Schedule in-person live workshop coming up here in the greater Metro Detroit area, October 21st. The link for everything is down in the show notes below. So make sure you go check it out. I would love to see you there. It is only... Um, there's only going to be spaces for 10 women. I want to keep it small because I want to be able to help walk you through all of these steps and all of these life areas and to help you really get clear about a lot of different things within this time period that we will have there together. So until next time, remember, stay weird and I'll catch you on the next episode. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and it freed you to see your life a bit differently. Make sure to check out those show notes in the description for a full rundown of today's episode with all the important links and resources. If you want weekly exclusive episodes with me personally, make sure to sign up for my Simplify My Life newsletter. I'd love to know what you enjoyed about this episode, so leave a review to let me know how I can continue to support you. So mama, I want you to know, you're doing much better than you think. You're further than you believe and you're worthy to have it all. So until next time, stay weird and keep doing you, babe. Coming up next time on the We Ain't Normal show. So how do you victory map? Like victory mapping is about self-image. You know, one of the things that I realized as I started to victory map was how I was seeing myself. Because it took me a minute to start celebrating, like I said, start celebrating the things that I felt like a mom should already be doing. Want more of this episode? Make sure your podcast notifications are on and you're a part of the We Ain't Normal family by going to the charmedlife.show to get weekly podcast updates and notifications. I'll see you there.